For this video, I'm going to be reviewing the legendary shooter known as Musha for the Sega Genesis. Quick little background on me, my video game experiences started out with the Commodore computers as well as the Atari game consoles. And growing up in high school, I kind of evolved into a Sega game player. So I have a lot of experience with the Sega Genesis and um, I kind of upgraded to the Sega Genesis circa Christmas 1992. And for my very next birthday, my dad said I could pick out any video game I wanted as long as it didn't exceed $20 for my birthday present. You had to know him. So this was circa 1993. Back then, we didn't have like the full internet. We just had online services. So I shopped around all the stores on Prodigy. Uh, basically, that's what we had was Prodigy. It was kind of like America Online. And the Sears store had a bunch of Sega Genesis games at the time for 1999. Musha was the game that I picked. And what an amazing birthday present. I kind of bought the game blind for some reason or another. I, I didn't see any magazine reviews at the time for this game. It just kind of uh, fell through the cracks. This is certainly one of the hidden gems of the Sega Genesis. You know, I'm not going to lie. I grew up watching a lot of uh, classic game room on YouTube, and he always raves about Truxton. Well, Musha is my Truxton. Musha is just, I have a lot of sentimental feelings about this particular game, so it's going to be difficult for me to detach my personal bias for this game. I just absolutely love this game. Having said that, I'm not the only one who clearly has strong feelings towards this game, because if you try to purchase it nowadays on eBay, a clean copy of the cartridge with the game box and instructions is going to set you back about $600. So clearly I'm not the only one who has strong feelings towards this game. This game is considered like a cult classic nowadays. It wasn't a very big commercial success, and I think that's why the game costs so much to purchase nowadays is because I know they didn't sell a lot of copies of them. But uh, like, like I said, I bought mine brand new at Sears for 20 bucks. Clearly, it was um, it was already being clearanced circa 1993, so yeah, I, I think it kind of flopped uh, commercially, but the game is absolutely incredible if you love shooters. And I also had purchased a TurboGrafx-16 around this era just because I loved the shooters, like Blazing Lasers and all those type of games, Air Zonk. Obviously, if, if you're into shooters, then Musha is uh, one of the best on the Genesis. So let me talk about the numerous positives for this particular game. I mean, the graphics are stunning. It's some of the best parallel scrolling I've ever seen in a game. And they do some, like, pseudo 3D effects, especially in the later levels when some, like, the tiles fall down into a cavern and uh, just, you know, visuals that you really don't expect to see on a Sega Genesis. Uh, you know, the, the Sega Genesis hardware was pretty primitive compared to when the Super Nintendo came out. And a lot of those kind of wavy transition effects that you only really saw on the Super Nintendo, uh, this game has some of those interesting transitions, and, and I don't know how they pulled them off on the Sega Genesis. Another thing this game really was great at, legendary actually, was its soundtrack. This is arguably one of the best soundtracks of any Sega Genesis game. So many people didn't understand how to program the Yamaha chip on the Sega Genesis, and some of the the sports games were notorious for having like this fart sound for the bass and everything and it just whoever whoever wrote this music to Musha uh, they were right there with Streets of Rage for for really pushing this Yamaha chip to its strengths and it, it does have just an absolutely banging soundtrack that so I'll talk about some of the negatives on this particular game there are two glaring problems and they're kind of interrelated the difficulty the difficulty on this game is brutal it's even if you set it for easy, uh, it still gets pretty hard really quick. Uh, there's a lot of things moving around on the screen. It's really pushing the Genesis uh, sprite handling capabilities, and there's like, you know, 50 or 60 things happening at once, and it's kind of hard to avoid the bullets and, and, you know, but that's pretty typical of all shooters, so that's nothing uh, unique to this particular game. It just is typical of the, the genre of the game. The game does seem to have unlimited continues, but I'm not sure how useful they are because once you uh, die and lose all your power-ups, those later levels are basically impossible. You know, they're benchmarked for having like four or five uh, lasers shooting out of the front and the force field, you know, spinning around your, your space vehicle. And 
if you don't have that, um, you basically die almost immediately as you spawn. So um, the game is brutally hard on the later levels for sure, and that might frustrate a lot of game players. So what's my bottom line rating on this particular game? I'm giving Musha a 9 out of 10. Uh, this game is one of the best of its breed. I think it's probably the best shooter on the Sega Genesis, and I know that's saying a lot because the Genesis had a lot of amazing shooters like Truxton and Thunder Force. If you love shooters, uh, you should definitely try to add this to your Genesis collection. Uh, as I mentioned earlier though, at $600 a pop nowadays, um, it's kind of a rough proposition. Is it worth $600? I don't know. I mean, if you had strong childhood feelings for the game and are feeling a lot of nostalgia, you probably would be willing to spend that $600. Me, personally, I don't think I would go that far, but luckily I already own my old copy from 1993. Thanks for joining me on this review of Musha. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe.